Coach Loxley might have just flipped a Bama commit. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. So we got big news um, yesterday, as four star Zymir Smith decommitted from Alabama, and this is humongous news for Maryland football. And I think that Coach Loxley might have just pulled off one of the biggest flips that we have seen under the Coach Loxley era. I think that Zymir Smith, if you watch his film, I was watching his huddle, I looked up Zymir Smith. Um, highlights or huddle or whatever you want to put in there and watch his last year highlight tape, you will be like, oh, oh, this kid is something. This kid's a little bit different. This kid moves different. This isn't one of those guys that you just normally are like, oh, like he's your typical kind of athlete. Like he plays a bunch of different positions. He's he's definitely a good athletic kid. This is a kid that's like has a chance, I think, to even – go and skyrocket up recruiting boards. He's a four-star right now at just about everywhere, and I think he has a chance to even be a little bit higher. I don't think he'll get to a five-star, but I think in terms of his ranking, I think it can go higher in terms of in Maryland, in terms of in nationally, in terms of where he's ranked amongst the different athletes. Like, I'm watching this kid's film, and he's got some juice. He's got some athleticism in him. That I just haven't seen. I don't know if the I don't know the last Maryland commit that I have seen have this type of tools and this type of athletic explosiveness and speed. I don't think I've ever seen it. I'm watching this kid run. I'm watching how this kid move moves, excuse me. And I'm saying, wow, this kid is different. This isn't your normal kind of Maryland commit. Like, this is a kid that probably, when it's all said and done, will probably come in and be right away the best athlete potentially on this Maryland team, the most athletic kid. And so for Coach Loxley to allow this kid, to recruit this kid, to continue to recruit this kid, he went on the official visit while he was still committed to Maryland. And for him to continue to push this kid and want him to go to Maryland and continue to call him, I guess, text him. However that works, I, I honestly don't know exactly how that stuff works um, with the pushing for kids while they're committed. I guess you still just are in contact with them and all these different things. But for Coach Loxley to continue to recruit this type of athlete, to continue to recruit this kid, is a big deal for Maryland football's 2025 class. And he could be another amazing add to this class that I've said it has a chance to be the best class that coach Loxley has had. And it is really shaping up to be, I think that class and Zymir Smith could be a huge part of that could be a huge part of being one of the best classes that we have seen coach Loxley have. And so the interesting part of his game and some of the people say the reason he decommitted from Bama is because I guess Bama said that they see him on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I saw that somewhere in an article. I'm not sure how much truth there is to that, but of course he's listed as an athlete. And when you watch his film, he plays literally everywhere. He plays a lot of running back. It's a lot of him at running back. It's some hit. It's some. He's out wide as well at receiver. Some. He's also playing corner. It felt like I saw him at safety as well. So he's really an athlete. He's playing just about everywhere. And everywhere he plays, he pops. And so I guess he decommitted from Bama because I don't know exactly. I don't know if he wanted it more. It was because he just he wanted to make sure he played right away or like those different things. Or if he didn't like where um, 
or where Bama, Bama was going to play him. I don't know exactly why he decommitted from Alabama. I don't know what the process there behind that, but I'm not complaining because it sounds like Maryland is the heavy favorite. Almost all the recruiting websites have Maryland as the favorite now. If you go look at 247 now, it's saying he has a 75% chance to go to Maryland and different player or different um analysts have him predicted to go to Maryland. Um pretty much all of them do. Uh Wesley Brown does, Tom Lloyd does. Um, a bunch of people have him uh projected to go to Maryland, which is interesting. And so I think he's the kind of guy that comes in and is instant impact player. And we need those types of guys. We need guys that can come in that are really high-level players that can push the players that are already there. You don't want players behind um, guys. You don't want guys to come in that aren't going to push the guys, the upperclassmen, the seniors, the juniors. You don't want guys that aren't going to push those guys and say, yeah, we're right on your tail. We're right behind you on the depth chart. Yeah, you might be the senior. Yeah, you might be the junior. But you have to continue to stay locked in. You have to continue to play well. You have to continue to get better if you want to play, or I'm going to steal your spot. That's what you want in your program. And when you bring in a guy like Zamir Smith, who I have no idea where Maryland will play him. It sounds like Maryland will decide once he gets there and once he gets comfortable, what position he will play. He could definitely be on the offensive side of the ball. I think if he came in on the offensive side of the ball, he'd he'd be our most explosive player. I really think that. I think he'd be our best athlete on the offensive side of the ball. And all we would have to do is find ways to get that kid the ball, whether it was jet sweeps, whether it's just handing the ball off to him, whether it's the screen game, whatever it is, this is a kid you just have to get the ball in his hands and you'll watch what will happen. And there was a reason he was committed to Bama. It's because He was such a high-level athlete because he's such a high-level player. So whenever you flip a guy from Bama, you know you're going after the right type of kid. And I do believe this is the type of guy that can really bring our 2025 class to the next level. Because I'm looking at a kid like Malik Washington, who we just landed, four-star Malik Washington, who I'm actually going to talk about today. And I'm saying, yeah, Malik Washington's awesome. Don't get me wrong. He's an awesome type of player, and he's probably going to come in, and he has a chance to play right away. I'm going to talk about that later, and he's going to be the most impactful Maryland commit maybe really ever in a long time. Um, But for our 2025 class to really feel like, oh, we made progress, oh, this 2025 class is special, it can't just be one player. And I know there's some other really good players in our 2025 class, another running back as well. I know Zymir Smith's technically an athlete, but I'm just saying he plays running back. But Iverson Howard as well, who's a four-star on a lot of websites, is also in our 2025 class, who's a four-star on some things. And so I'm looking at this kid, Zymir, and I'm saying, okay, ESPN has him ranked really high. ESPN has him ranked 138th in the class. They have him ranked fourth in the state of Maryland. Rivals has him as a four star. On three has him as a four star on their industry rankings. They have him ranked 326 nationally. And so it's interesting. He's just the type of guy that I think can just come in and shake things up. And I think. He's the type of guy that when we put together these different pieces, and I talked about Bryce Jenkins the other day. If we put together Bryce Jenkins, Zymir Smith, and we got Malik Washington over these past two weeks, three four-star players at impact positions that can all really help, I think that is a perfect start or I guess you're not really at the start of your 2025 class but it's a perfect little recruiting stint and it's a it's a really good place to be in your 2025 class with a couple of players still on the board I honestly don't know how many other four-star players Maryland will be able to add but adding Zim- Zymir Smith and flipping him from Bama to Maryland is just a humongous deal with what he can bring to the program. And I talk about it. It's always a domino effect with these guys. Always a domino effect. Once you get one, once you get two, once you get three, 
It's a lot easier to get four or five. The hardest part is getting the first couple. But once you get the first couple, it's a lot easier to start getting some of those other guys. So I think that it could end up being a domino effect. Some people could look at us that we have really highly recruited on our board and say, oh, they just got Zymir Smith. Oh, and they have Malik Washington. Oh, four-star Bryce Jenkins just committed. Maybe this is Maryland's where I need to be. Maybe this is where I want to be. And I think that could be something that could come in to play but Zamir Smith ranked on 247 composites ranked as the eighth best player in Maryland the 12th best athlete in the class and 279th ranked nationally so he's ranked really high level player and I'm telling you this is the type of kid that can come in and literally play anywhere on the football field and will bring a lot of versatility I think he could be a really good player on defense I think there's a reason that Bama wanted him on defense but I also think he could be a really good player in on offense as well. Uh, had just about all the offers that you could have wanted. Like this kid was a three star for a while, but really kind of jumped up in recruiting. Like he has Penn State, he has a Georgia offer. Like he has some big time offers: Q, South Carolina, Tennessee. He has Texas. He has Virginia Tech. He has some other big time offers. But he's a Maryland kid. So keeping in state kid, if keeping these guys here, not letting a kid like Zymir Smith slip off to Bama is going to be important. And it looks like we will land this kid. I don't know exactly when he's going to announce, but it does seem like we are going to land Zymir Smith. So I think we're in a good spot in recruiting. I think we're doing a really good job. Coach Loxley's really pushing for a lot of different guys. And Bryce Jenkins, four-star defensive tackle, commits soon as well. And then if we can land Zymir Smith, then I'm looking at the 2025 class. And I'm saying it's definitely on track to be one of the best that we have seen. We'll see what else Coach Loxley can do. Of course, he's always good for a signing day flip or whatever, but we got a while to go till then. So it'll be interesting to see what else Coach Loxley can do. But we are in a good spot in the 2025 class, and I think Zymir Smith could come in and be one of the most explosive players we have seen put on the Maryland football jersey really in a long, long time for Maryland football. Will Malik Washington come in right away and start? I thought this would be interesting to talk about because it also has to do with our quarterback battle this year. I'll talk about that after this ad from the Game Time Map. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute, like a Maryland Terrapins game? But finding tickets is hard. I've been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last-minute tickets and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKED on college for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. If the Maryland quarterback battle does not go well this year and people aren't playing up to the level that, or one guy isn't playing up to the level that we need him to play at, Malik Washington's going to come in and start. I believe that. I don't know exactly how Coach Loxley is with freshman quarterbacks coming in and playing. How I see him being with it is being like it's an open competition and whatnot. But my thing is, if this quarterback competition this year takes a weird turn where, let's say, okay, the first couple of weeks we name MJ Morris a starter, but at Michigan State, MJ Morris doesn't look good. He doesn't look good the next week as well. And we're looking at a bad start for MJ Morris, and he puts Billy Edwards in there. And then Billy Edwards doesn't look that great either. And then maybe he tries Cam Edge or goes back to MJ Morris. And we never quite get the rhythm in the quarterback room. There's never really a starter that comes out that looks good and it kind of just doesn't go the way that we want it to go in the quarterback room. 
which I think is entirely a possibility with the Maryland quarterback room. I, I, I don't want it to happen. I have trust that MJ Morris is going to be the starter and is going to do it at a high level. But I do think there is a chance that it kind of fluctuates and it's not great play and we get inconsistent play. I do think that's entirely a possibility. MJ Morris doesn't have a lot of time in the Maryland system. He's new in the Maryland system. Maybe he doesn't quite fit him exactly right and how he wants him to. I can see that happening. And then also as well as Billy Edwards and Cam Edge haven't had much time in the Maryland or, or not in the Maryland system. They've had a lot of time in the Maryland system, but haven't had a lot of college experience. And there's a reason Coach Loxley brought in MJ Morris to compete with them because he didn't have trust that they were going to be the next starter over there at the University of Maryland. And so I can see a, a definitely a possibility where it's shaky and it kind of different guys start different games and we never quite find out who the, we never really get like a clear path of, oh, he just played well. He's in line to be the starter the next year. It's all up and down and it's all weird and people play different games and we never really figured it out. And then we could be looking at Malik Washington coming in next year and be like, okay, He's our starter. And Coach Loxley might not say it until after the first couple of games or after spring ball or whatever. But when you bring in a four-star Malik Washington, he's not coming in to sit that long. He's just not. He's coming in to play, and he's coming in to play early. And I think it's entirely possible that if the quarterback battle doesn't go the way that Coach Loxley wants it to go this year or the fans want it to go this year and nobody out of the group or – even if MJ Morris ends up starting every game, but he just doesn't look quite good, I could see a world where Malik Washington becomes a starter next year for Maryland football. I think that is entirely a possibility. I also see a world where maybe MJ Morris plays decent this year. Maybe not insane, but he has a, a solid year where we feel pretty good about him. But he starts the year maybe next year as a starting quarterback, but he struggles. We put Malik Washington in, and oh, he never gets his job back. And there's a couple of examples in college football that are in the front of my memory where that has happened at different college programs where the freshman just outplays the senior or the junior and just takes a spot because the freshman is really highly recruited. And that other the other quarterback, the upper class, and he was a good player, but it just it just never quite got to it never really could hit the ceiling as a team he didn't he didn't really he didn't allow the team to hit that ceiling because he just wasn't as good as that freshman wasn't as talented um I remember Clemson football this happened um it happened with Trevor Lawrence and Kelly Bryant and I'm not saying Malik Washington's Trevor Lawrence but it, it's kind of the same dynamic where you have a guy that was a maybe Kelly Bryant could be like an MJ Morris where you have a guy who was a pretty good player and he did some good things and he just couldn't get you over the top. And obviously it's a different program. It's a different kind of players, but I can see it being a similar thing as that. And then you have this five-star freshman, Trevor Lawrence, and it's like, we're going to turn to Trevor Lawrence. The first couple games will get both of these guys reps, but at the end of the day, Trevor Lawrence is probably going to be the guy for us. And so I could definitely see that happening with Malik Washington. I also could see a year or a, I could also see a, a way where Malik Washington sits a year and he learns from MJ Morris and he learns in the quarterback room and we don't have to force anything. And we let him, we let him sit for a year. We let him cook. We let him get better. And we take him out of the oven in his sophomore year, and he's ready to go. And we don't have to see as many of those freshman struggles, maybe. I can see a world where that happens. But I do think there's a really good shot that Malik Washington comes in and plays right away and pushes to be the quarterback right away for Maryland football. I can 100% see that happening. I'll be interesting to know what you guys think. I think it really depends on how this year's quarterback competition goes. I think you can also see a world where – Two or three of these guys are gone next year between Billy Edwards, Cam Edge, and MJ Morris. Depending on who's not the starter, I almost guarantee that the other two are probably gone to try and play somewhere else because you have they're not the starter. Then you have Malik Washington coming in right behind them, and it's like, when are they ever going to play? So it's interesting to see what could happen with 
Maryland football. And I do think Malik Washington has a really good chance at coming in and starting right away. But that's still a while away. Just a topic that I wanted to bring up. NBA Summer League is here. Two Terps have a chance to make a big impact, but I think one has a chance to really impress some people. I will talk about that right now. So, Jameer Young and Dante Scott are headed into Summer League, and, and Summer League starts, I think, uh, it starts in like a couple of days, uh, like three, four, five days about. So it's getting ready to start. And I wanted to talk about this because Jameer Young, of course, signed with the Nuggets and Dante Scott signed with the Golden State Warriors and got their last roster spot. And so NBA Summer League's interesting. It's really interesting. And so you have a guy like Dante Scott, who I want to talk about first, um, going to Golden State Summer League team. The thing is, Summer League's weird because – it, they still play it like a game. Like not everybody plays. And I question if Dante Scott's going to play because he was the last guy they picked up on that summer league team. It sounded like, so I don't even know if Dante Scott will get the opportunity to play like that, but i still do think that if he does, he has a chance to be a pretty good player for them in summer league. He's got to shoot the three ball. Well, that's for sure. You know, they love to do that in golden state, but I really want to talk about Jameer Young and focus on Jameer Young. If Jameer Young gets the opportunity in Summer League for the Denver Nuggets, I believe that he could jump onto the scene and surprise a lot of people come NBA Summer League. I think he surprises a lot, a lot, a lot of people on the uh, Summer League circuit. I think he's going to surprise all the uh, worldwide scouts, but I think he's going to surprise all the NBA scouts. And I think he's going to have a chance to be like, oh, who's the, the Nuggets are going to be like, who's, or they know who he is, obviously, but who is this kid? He's got this kind of talent. I think he has a chance to do that. And the Nuggets are smart. They're a smart organization. They know what they're doing. They knew that they had something when they decided to sign Jameer Young to an undrafted, um, f- as an undrafted, unsigned free agent in terms of um in the nba because jameer young went undrafted of course we didn't expect him to get drafted but i think in nba summer league if he's the starting point for the denver nuggets and i don't know the denver nuggets summer league roster i don't know but i'm telling you he will put up numbers in terms of scoring the ball we saw it last year had a couple of 30 point games had a couple of huge games carried that maryland basketball program on his back first team all big 10 type of player and absolutely made it a lot better to watch Maryland basketball without him last year we're not good we're not good without him we're not the same team without him we can't do we're we're, we're quite horrible without Jameer Young and we weren't that good with him we are terrible without him last year and so what he did in terms of scoring the ball he was able to get to spots he has a he has this quickness in this little explosive first step where he's able to get by guys and he's not the tallest guy but he knows how to play he can shoot the ball as well and I think he has a chance to really make an impact on the Denver Nuggets team and I don't want to be like yeah he's going to he's going to get a spot he's going to get a two-way deal with the Denver Nuggets but I really do believe if he's starting and they let him do his thing and the Nuggets is probably a good spot to go in the summer league because they're not going to have a ton of first round or high draft pick guys because they're not picking that high. And so he's not going to get overshadowed by some top 10 pick or something like that. Like he's going to have a chance, I think, to play. But I'm looking at it and I'm saying, if they literally let him do his thing and let him do what he did at Maryland last year, he's going to have a chance, I think, to really burst onto the seed in terms of the summer league, in terms of just the NBA, in terms of if that means just the national scouts and some of the scouts from other uh, leagues outside of the NBA, I think Jameer Young's going to have the chance to do that. 
Dante Scott, I just don't know, and I can't say that. I just don't have confidence in saying that because I don't know how much he'll play on the Golden State Summer League team. Uh, I just don't know if he will, but I'll make sure to keep my tabs on it. If he does play, I think he has a chance to make an impact. But what Jameer Young can do with the ball, I think, is really important, and the NBA likes those types of guys. So it'll be interesting to see what can happen with Jameer Young and Dante Scott in the NBA Summer League. Mm -hmm. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.